I've been thinking recently about a certain statistic that you hear thrown around quite often within the video game industry, the modern industry, that 50% of gamers, 50% of the consumer demographic are women. So many detrimental decisions have been made by developers and producers, journalists, and you know other people with power in this industry. They have based so many of their decisions on this idea that, well, the only reason that it's not obvious that half of all gamers are women is because of this culturally embedded misogyny that is inherent to this industry. Not only this industry, but it's somehow baked into the fabric of our society, this misogyny and sexism, right? But I remember when I first heard this statistic and, and my first reaction was, well, this is bullshit, obviously, because women don't play the same games as men. And the definition of game would have to be stretched quite far in order for this interpretation of the data to be taken seriously at all. And I mean, we can thank the journalists for this because without them forcing this issue into the absolute forefront number one priority of the industry to the point where the entire industry itself has been reshaped to correct said imbalance, okay? Fact is, without them, we'd probably have something more akin to the Japanese industry where there is an element of gender segregation, especially when it comes to not only gaming, but other aspects of their society. Things like manga and anime. Let's just take that for example. I mean, you have shoujo for girls and then, you know, shonen for boys, right? And is there something inherently immoral about that? Well, I don't think so. I think men and women have different tastes. And the situation we have in the West is actually very irrational. The more that you kind of think about it and you go, well, what are they trying to achieve? And what is going on? Is, is there an experiment taking place? And how long until we can determine the results? I think it's been long enough, personally. I think, you know, I think I'm going to call it. I'm calling it. And, and we're going to determine whether or not this big shakeup was worth it. Okay, so first of all, the thing that I find very suspicious about the modern industry and the new generation of developers, female developers, is that it's not like they're making games that they think that women would really like. You know, because I think J Japan is definitely catered to female taste in gaming, especially on the handheld consoles, because this, this statistic of 50-50, the press are willfully ignoring the fact that women are playing, you know, casual games, mobile games, Candy Crush, stuff that is really not core gaming and men are not interested in, right? So here's the big lie, here's the big hoodwink at the center of this entire narrative, but it's never acknowledged. Because you have these female devs, you know, who, who've suddenly they've just been given this job that, that a lot of men would literally crawl through 15 miles of shit and broken glass just to have an interview at Bungie or Blizzard or one of these legendary companies, right? These women have had a red carpet experience when it comes to accessing this industry, right? In a way that is completely unprecedented and, and has been facilitated by the media. You know, it became a mainstream issue of, oh, we need more gender representation in gaming on all levels. So straight out of university, straight out of these kind of, you know, politically charged meme degrees, these women get plopped into either the journalist side or directly into key positions of authority within the industry. And nine times out of 10, their first inclination is to begin the agitation, begin the political praxis. Now I have to change the culture of the company I've just joined. I have to reshape everything in the image of my ideology. This is not really about what they said it was about. That was just a narrative that is used so that power structures of the past, of the traditional industry can be dismantled. It's about re-educating gamers, and it's about creating content for this new class of human, this like new pleb class, who are for some reason genderless. Like the, the concept that there are two different genders, you know, sexual dimorphism, that is the most offensive thing ever. That You're a Nazi if you believe that, because it's obvious that gender is this spectrum, infinitely divisible, kind of a chaotic smear, an interference pattern where anyone can be anything like that is so obvious and if you can't see that if you don't support that 
then you're fired from this company. I'm going to go talk to HR and they're going to get all of the incels in the office fired. All of the crusty straight white males left over from that misogynist era of these companies, yet Bioware and Bungie and all these other ones, they have to go. Because this new generation of devs and creators, they do have a target audience, but it's debatable if this audience is real or it could literally just represent their ideal of what an audience is supposed to be. The kind of people that enjoy playing the new Gears of War, where you've taken a traditionally masculine power fantasy and replaced the jacked soldier marine guy with a butch-looking lesbian who looks kind of ugly. She's like fugly and no one really enjoys it. The men aren't enjoying it. Women don't play Gears of War, but we, we pretend that they do. Game doesn't sell very well. No one likes it. Whose fault is that? I mean, oh, oh, it's the audience's fault. Because this new pleb class of consumer needs to have ideological propaganda mixed in with their entertainment, like you would mix in medicine into a bowl of dog food. You know, that's how this current generation of, you know, <laughs> extremely ideological female uh, creators treat us. In fact, you know, I think they ha they'd probably have more affection for an actual community of dogs. And to be honest, I don't really think that these feminist types care much for women either. They, they seem extremely hateful of humans. The idea of women having tastes that are for women, I mean, that's very anti-feminist. Like, feminists have a very, very strange conception of femininity in that they kind of don't really value femininity at all. They disregard it and replace it with this default of just the male experience, where everything in life has to at least equate or match up or, or exceed the default of just the average straight white male, which in their minds is this privileged class. <laughs> but in reality, I mean, the straight white male is probably on the bottom of the pecking order in this new society that we live in. So there really is no privilege. And, it, and you know, the average man is, he is not a, a top 5% Chad where everything just goes his way. His life fucking sucks. And anything he does achieve, he achieves through suffering and sheer hard work and perseverance. All the while kind of understanding that he himself is disposable. I mean, that is the experience of men in society. And yet women don't understand this at all. Because the thing is, women are born with value inherent, right? Like that's just part of being a woman. It's that you are inherently valued by society to the point where you're blind to your own privilege in a way. Whereas for men, you know, a man is nothing. A man is nothing. It's his achievements that give him value. You know, just on that point, so many female to male trans individuals are learning that this idea of a patriarchy where all you have to do is just be a man and you get this Masonic handshake into the upper echelons of our society, that is obviously a myth, <laughs> but, you know, quite the contrary. I mean, you know, the, the low status, low value male is one of the most wretched classifications of human being that you can get. I mean, women literally <laughs> cannot stand low value men to the point where, I mean, they consider about 80% of the male population low value, as a matter of fact. And why do they feel like that? Well, you know, not every man can really live up to these expectations that are ingrained in the psyche of modern women. Reinforced by the media, reaffirmed by our academia. And of course, that's the point. And it doesn't help anyone. It, it hurts women and it hurts men. We've been living in this experiment. It is almost like a kind of Frankfurt School Marxist experiment to see if when equality is achieved, do we get the utopia that we were promised. Do we get an improved and superior video game industry? Because I think the video game industry is insufferable and it's never been as bad as it is now. It's never been as corporatized while at the same time, the corporations don't even cater to our tastes. There's one thing for the industry to be controlled by like three different mega corporations, but to have it also be just lowered to the lowest common denominator where Everything we loved about the industry, everything that made the industry successful to begin with has been sucked out and disposed of. It's pretty clear that, you know, we were obviously lied to, the academics have been lying to us, anyone with a gender fixated lens, anyone with this Marxist adjacent worldview, the things that they believe and the things they say, it's all power relative. Like, their major academics, their major philosophers, 
admit this. They admit that they see the world in terms of, of small power games. It's just all game theory. And even engaging in a debate, I mean, all that is is a power game. Sometimes it's not even worth engaging in debate, you just steamroll. Or utilize pill-pull to, you know, win arguments. And that's the thing, I mean, I, I, I've mentioned in other videos, I've described things like transgenderism as having an aspect of Marxism. And then someone goes, uh, hey, you don't know anything about leftist theory because uh, Marxism is economic, dum-dum. Yeah, I know that. I, I get that. But here's the point. It, it, you, don't, you shouldn't even really call it Marxism. It's, and, 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 you know, the boomer conservatives call it cultural Marxism. But really, it's something like Marcusism. You know, it's, um, it's Frankfurt School stuff, where you can take the structure of Marxism and the way it treats the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, and then you just transplant that to sex. And then you get feminism, and you transplant that to race, and then you get intersectionalism. And, you know, that's what BLM are all jazzed up about. So I think it's extremely important to recognize the Marxism within our modern society because it's everywhere. It's, it's corrupted almost everything. And it is the true reason why everything sucks. And, you know, you look at the modern game industry and you go, are women responsible for this? And the answer is yes, technically, but there's an asterisk there and it's that, you know, they're the cause, but they're not completely responsible either. It's the people funding this kind of political action. It's the academics that are teaching this stuff as gospel, right? And, and this is kind of one of the most dangerous things about the far left. It's that their ideology is fanatical and uh, it, it, it doesn't even allow itself to be scrutinized. It's, it's completely anti-liberal. And it takes advantage of women in an extremely insidious way. It takes advantage of modern Western women's independence, you know, because our women are liberated, quote unquote, and they have power in the society more so than any other women that have ever existed on earth. Okay, but here's the thing. Our forebears understood all too well that women are highly susceptible to bullshit. They're highly susceptible to emotional manipulation and propaganda. And, you know, really, a, a, a healthy society has to have some kind of immune system in terms of its culture. And historically, that immune system was simply men having more power, more responsibility, not allowing women the same level of access to civil and political structures within the society. Whereas, you know, culturally, women have always been highly influential culturally, right? Because that's the point. Women almost rule over the culture, whereas men rule over the civilization, right? That's how it's always been. But now, well, men have been totally disempowered, so we don't have any authority over our women. And yet they have total control over the society and the culture and almost all of the traditionally male spaces, while also being integrated into traditionally male aspects of the civilization, the military, the political infrastructure. And yet it's pretty obvious to me that the women of the West have been compromised because all of these beliefs that they're, they're so zealous, you know, it's like they're so into this diehard activism. Who came up with the ideology? Who's paying for the academics to, to make this stuff the, the, the biggest issues on every woman's mind, right? Well, they're outsiders. They're people that don't have our best interests at heart. People that want to completely wipe all of the progress of the last God knows how many fucking centuries, the actual progression of the Western world, right? The elevation of humanity out of the darkness, you know, <laughs> like... The unending darkness of a cruel world where survival of the fittest is the rule of law? Ladies, do you really want to go back to what things used to be like? Right? Because I'll tell you what, women had a lot harder of a time before the quote-unquote patriarchy came along and created civilization. And not only civilization, but probably the best one. I mean, I am a Western chauvinist, right? But hey, you know what? I like Western civilization. And guess what? I don't think any other civilization has ever treated their women as well as the West has, and I'm talking, this is before women's liberation, you know? The fact is, a nuclear family where you can raise your children as a housewife and you can indulge in the modern marvels of technology that make your life easier while your husband brings home enough money to support multiple kids and a nice house in a comfy neighborhood, that is the legacy of the West, right? So that's what they've been trying to kill. And by they, I mean they. It's an outsider's critique, turning our entire history and our people into some kind of pathology that needs to be treated. That is the worldview of the guy who is funding these 
radical feminists within every facet of our culture, right? The guy paying for it, he doesn't believe the shit that she does, really. He sees the Marxism for what it is, which is a tool, and he's getting what he wants. He's getting his money's worth. And that's why the get what go broke meme doesn't really land fully, because this guy, he's not going to go broke. And by funding political action, he is getting exactly what he wants, which is the undermining, the destruction, dismantling of everything that, you know, me and you guys fucking love. Feminism has been funded and pushed and, and, and kind of artificially astroturfed to get more women into key positions throughout the civilization. And then now they are kind of the conduit by which the Marxism is pumped in and introduced. Because, you know, men smell bullshit. Men question authority. Women go with the herd, and really Marxism is far more digestible when it's paired with the inherent and ancient power of the pussy.